So after our brief look at the library, we're going to look at the middle row of buttons that separates the library from the timeline. And uh, in another video, we will then have a close look at the timeline itself. Now, looking at this middle row, we have got the import and conform buttons. Import is uh, simple. We'll bring up a dialog that will allow us to go and select files for import which we will do a little bit later and we can choose network drives local drives we can set favorites over here and we've got some options which we will explore conform takes us is one of the few buttons that take us to uh, a completely different page and this is my conform page this is where i would select where i would like to capture from uh, what type of settings um, and where to find my media we have a new composition button, which will create a new composition when I click on it. And what that will simply do is it will make a new um, timeline, a new uh, clean timeline for me to work with. So the following buttons over here actually have got to do uh, or will have an influence on compositions as well as clips. So I can very easily take a composition. Uh, I'm going to call this one 003 and I can very quickly make a copy of that and once I've done that um, I can then uh, start working on a on a new uh, on a new composition or a copy of that one you'll see in my material name actually it's actually um, my uh, the name of my composition is untitled although my description is is over here it's automatically named it as copy of untitled uh, double click in there if I name this one Patrick Comp 1 and I double click to load that that's now my current edit I can make a copy of it it would be called copy of Patrick Comp 1 going to select these I can go and delete them very easily and I can also, if I would like to store or save just the composition in a safe place, I can either hit the Save button, which will take me to a uh, place on my hard drive, and it's a content file, and I can call this Patrick, and save it. Now, that composition will contain all the information that pertains to this composition. So I am actually able to... Um, exit this project uh, go to a completely different project over here and load the same composition and you will see that the same composition has come in now there was no material on my timeline so that's why there's no material here but that's a very easy way to move compositions between projects. Um, so I can either do a load save or a store and recall. So once again, what I can do is, and what I might do is just quickly put something on the timeline so that you can see what's going on. I'm going to hit store. I'm going to exit the project. I'm going to make a brand new one, new project, open that. And when I say recall, it's going to come in and there's my uh, clip um, oh I think that's a problem I only have my clip selected so that shows you what happens there what I'd actually done is I just copied the clip what I wanted to do was select the current edit store that recall that and now you'll see we have a composition that's come in as well as my clip. So uh, so those those commands are very handy for copying clips from one uh, composition to or from one uh, project to another as well as copying uh, compositions. Moving across to the other side of the library, we have got um, a few buttons starting off with render output. Now, although we have got background render always uh, working away, I can use the render output button to force uh, a render. So 
if I'm busy uh, working with something and background render hasn't caught up to what I'm doing, I can hit render output and force it to render. The generate source button is useful if I have set up proxies uh, in, the, in the setup. So if I go out here and decide I would like a new proxy and I would like that to be um, 8 to 1 and I would like that to be 8 bit. I'll get a warning that uh, I've made a change. What will happen now is I can now go and select here whether I want to use of my source clip or, or, or my proxy clip. If I select proxy, it will automatically go and it will switch to the new proxy for me. Uh, and what I can do is just to now and go and enable the source for that proxy and generate it. And it will now actually go through and generate that proxy and you'll be able to see that. Export media. Once again, we have a dialog box which will allow me to go and select um, file types. I can choose here whether I would do mix down, so new time code. Uh, do I do multiple clips with record time code or multiple clips with source time code, handles, um, burn ins, color scaling, uh, frame padding, and also audio output. Um, is done from here. We have an uh, export list which will allow us to export ALEs or CDLs. We can export LUTs. If you have a SDI card capable of doing playout, this button will bring up the VTR layoff button of uh, the v VTR layoff menu. And tasks will simply show you any tasks that are currently underway um, or using the render render output button will come up in the tasks button as well as any background renders that might be going on. Lastly over here we've got the cleanup button and this is going to allow us to delete caches so we can delete all caches in the project any unused caches all in the current composition all not in the current composition current frame marked region so for example if I wanted to go and delete a certain portion of cache and just do a clean up like that and there you'll see that uh, the proxies in that marked region has been cleaned up so that was a quick look at the button separating the library from the timeline we're going to have an in-depth look at the timeline in an upcoming video and uh, we hope that you'll stay with us and that you found the videos informative